howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest. The Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking a trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And bang on your husky. <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Do you believe in people... Do you believe that a man living in a mud hut in some dark, far-off corner of the world is still a man for all of that? If you do, this message is for you. It's the story of that man and his neighbors in a primitive village in the Orient, the Middle East, Africa, South America. There are thousands of such villages, all seeking something better than they have had before. Enough food to go around, a clean well, a school for the children. These are the freedom villages of our world today. And they're coming into the 20th century primarily by their own bootstraps. They need just a little help. A contribution in any amount will help swell the fund. And village by village, the free world will be strengthened. Send your contribution today to Freedom Village Care, New York 16, to any local care office. This message is brought to you as a public service. Sergeant Preston and little Terry Wiggins were seated before a blazing campfire. They were just finishing their midday meal. Terry, an orphan, was on his way to live with an uncle who ran a general store in the town of Caribou Bend. Golly, but that was a good meal, Sergeant Preston. Glad you enjoyed it, Terry. <clears throat> You're a good cook, aren't you? It's not my cooking that gave you such an appetite. Food always tastes good on the open trail. How much farther is it to Caribou Bend? Oh, should I have there in about two more hours? You know my Uncle Omar very well? Fairly well. He runs a general store in Caribou Bend. Haven't you ever seen him before? No, sir. I've never seen him. I I don't think he'll be very pleased to see me. What makes you say that? Well, his letter sounded as though he didn't like the idea of me coming to live with him. But after Mother and Dad died, he was the only relative I had. So I, I suppose he couldn't very well refuse. Well, Omar isn't a very friendly person. He has the reputation of being stingy. But don't be put off by his manner, son. Underneath it all, he has a good heart, and I'm sure he'll take good care of you. Do you suppose he'll let me keep Sparky? It's hard to say, Terry. Doesn't he know you have it on? No, sir. I, I didn't let him know about Sparky. So, sir, he'd make me get rid of him before I came. I thought if I just brought him along, Uncle Omar might let me keep him. Well, let's hope for the best. <laughs> In the meantime, we'd better be hitting the trail. Omar Wiggins was an elderly, dried-up-looking man with a long, sharp nose and a fringe of gray hair encircling his bald dome. He was standing behind the counter, looking on a customer as Sergeant Preston and Terry entered the store. All right, mister, here's your coffee. Now, uh, what else do you want? Well, you better give me a sack of flour, too, all right? Yes. Well, well, it's Sergeant Preston. Hello, Omar. I brought your nephew. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. So you're my nephew, Terry, eh? Yes, sir. You're not quite so big as I expected. I was counting on you to help me out with some of the hard work around the store. I'll be glad to help out, Uncle Omar. Don't worry. I'll see to it that you earn your keep. All right. <laughs> Say, what in tarnation is that big black and white dog doing in here? I don't mind King being in the store, but get that other one out of here. Go on now. Wait a minute, Uncle Omar. That dog belongs to me. I... Belongs to you? Yes, sir. His name is Sparky. By something, nothing was said about you bringing a dog along with you. 
I suppose I should have let you know beforehand. If you had, you'd have saved yourself the trouble of bringing him all the way up here. Because I'll tell you right now, you're not going to keep him. But Uncle Omar, Sparky is a good dog. I don't care what kind of a dog he is. I don't like the critters. I never did. He's a well-mannered dog, Omar. I can vouch for that. He's powerfully built. He'd make you a fine watchdog. Yeah. Uh, he's big enough. Yeah. That's what you mean. From the looks of him, he'd eat me out of house and home inside of a week. Sparky doesn't eat much. Honesty doesn't. At least give him a chance, Omar. It means a lot to Terry. No, no, no. You're trying to play on my sympathies. I might let him stay on for a few days till the boy gets settled. But after that, the dog will have to go. Hey, if you don't mind my button in, how about filling the rest of my order? What? Oh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I plumb forgot about you. What else was it you wanted? A sack of flowers. But yeah, I'll get it for you right away. While you're attending to that, I'll go out and get Terry's things off the sled. I'll go with you, Sergeant. All right, sir. I, I don't think I'm going to like you here very well. Always hard at first, Terry, moving into strange surroundings, but you'll get used to things after a while. Remember what I said about not being put off by your uncle's manner. Charlie, I, I don't know what I'll do if he makes me get rid of Sparky. Well, perhaps he'll change his mind, son. Are you going right back to Dawson City? No, I have to go to 40 Mile, but I'll be back this way tomorrow. Stop getting in and see you. In the meantime, keep your chin up. The customer whom Omar had been waiting on was a tough-looking sourdough named Ben Hooper. After leaving the store, he put the supplies on his sled and drove to a small cabin, which was located a short distance north of town. Oh! Oh! Partner, a man named Moose Farrell, looked up as he entered the cabin. Well, if you don't supply me, need it. Yeah, I got them all right. I also got some bad news for you. What do you mean? The old guy's nephew's come to town to live with him. Young kid, about nine or ten. Lodi brought him in while I was there. Well, what about it? The kid's got a dog. A dog? Yeah. Big rangey mutt with a powerful set of choppers, too. Hey, that's not so good. Doggone right, it's not so good. From the looks of him, if we try robbing the store tomorrow night, he's going to raise the roof. Holy mackerel. If that happens, we'll have the whole town on us before we can make a getaway. And I know it. One thing in our favor, though. Old man Wiggins don't like dogs. He told the kid that he could keep the dog for a couple of days, and then he'd have to get rid of him. Yeah. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. If we wait for that to happen, we may be twiddling our thumbs from now to next spring. Maybe we could hurry it up. Oh. But suppose we offer to buy the mutt for a sled dog. You know what a miser the old guy is. He'd probably jump at the chance to sell him if he offered a decent price. Yeah, that's an idea. Okay, we'll go into town tomorrow morning and buy the dog. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Today, July 1st, Canada, our good neighbor to the north and strong ally, celebrates her 88th birthday. This is equal to our July 4th, and we send her our most hearty and sincere congratulations. Say, kids, which would you rather do? Read about your favorite baseball team in the papers? Or see a game on the screen? Or be right in the ballpark, yelling for the players on your team, eating hot dogs, drinking soda pop, and having the time of your life? Golly, nothing beats the fun at a ballpark. Come out to the game now as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate without paying a cent. If you're 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult, you can now get a free baseball ticket right inside a package of Quaker Pop Wheat or Quaker Pop Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. Or buy Quaker Paco 10 and get two free baseball tickets. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Get in on the fun. Right away, get a free baseball ticket package of Quaker Pop Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. If your store doesn't have the special packages yet, just send the box top from the regular packages of these same cereals. Send to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now to continue. The next day, Terry was busy dusting the shelves of the general store when Sparky, in the act of chasing a spider, accidentally knocked over a stack of canned food. Sparky, watch out! Confound it all, 
what's that clumsy elephant done now? Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle Omar. Sparky didn't mean to knock them over. I'll pick them all up right away. Why, Thunder, that's the last straw. First he helps himself to a slab of smoked meat, and now he starts knocking my store down. That muck will have to go. Please, Uncle Omar, give him another chance. Never mind arguing with you right now. I've got to wait on these two customers. Quiet. Yes, sir, James, what can I do for you? Uh, oh, you're the fellow was in here yesterday. Did you forget something on your order? Nope. No, but I remembered you saying that you might want to get rid of the dog over there. Well, you bet your boots I want to get rid of him. Well, sir, so happens that my partner and me need another dog for our team. We're pulling up stakes today, heading south. We might be willing to take the dog off your hands. Well, mister, you came along just at the right time. Let's bring the dog over here and let's have a look at him. I will right away. Uh, bring the dog over here, will you, Terry? You heard what the fellow no, no, said. Please, Uncle Omar. Bring that dog over here. Don't give him any more of your back talk. Come on, over. Uh, well, he looks healthy enough. Good size, too. I reckon we could use him as a wheeler. I'll tell you what. We give you 75 bucks for him. Mister, you've just made yourself a deal. No, please, please don't sell him. You have no right to sell him. Sparky's my pal. I've had him ever since he was a pie. Hey, Thunder Boy, if you don't hush up that nonsense, I'll take my belt to you. Money in your pocket is better than a dog any day of the week. You'll find that out as you grow older. All right. Here's your hundred bucks. Well, thanks, mister. Thank you. He's all yours. I think he brought along that bag to throw over his head. Looks like he's going to act stubborn. Uh, don't worry, we'll handle him. I'll tie this rope to his collar and we'll drag him out if necessary. No, no, I won't let you take Sparky away. I won't let you. You let go of that mutt, Terry, before I set you a whack across the ear. Hear what I'm telling you? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's better now. Go in the back room and stay there. Yes, sir. So long, Sparky, old pal. Sparky was worried. He couldn't understand what was happening. He started after Terry, but a hand gripped his collar. Sorry, Pooch. Sparky gave an impatient growl and tried to pull free from his straining hand. But Moose only jerked harder on his collar. Oh, no, you don't. All right, quick, man. Get the bag over his head. Right. As Sparky saw the bag descending over his head, he gave a snarl of rage. But it was too late. He was trapped. Hold him, Moose. Don't worry, I got him. A few moments later, Moose had fastened the rope to Sparky's collar. Do you think it's safe to take off the bag now? Nothing doing. He's too doggone mad at his head. We'd better wait till later when we get back to the cabin. Yeah, I reckon you're right. But in the meantime, I'll stuff the bag inside his collar. So, oh, come on. There. All right, you want to much button, now get moving. You're coming along with us. Later that day, Sergeant Preston arrived back in Caribou Bend and stopped in to see Terry. As he entered the store, he found Terry huddled by the stove, his eyes red from sobbing. Omar was in the back room. Why, Terry, what's the matter? Uncle Omar told Sparky. They took him away. I'm sorry to hear that, Terry. I wish there was something I could do. There's nothing anyone can do. Perhaps your uncle will let you buy him back later on. I'll be glad to chip in on the price, and so will the constable. It's no use. The men who bought him are leaving town. They're taking Sparky with them. Well, fuck up, son. King sympathizes with you, and so do I, but <laughs> crying won't do any good. Maybe one of these days I'll find you a puppy that you'll like just as well as Sparky. I don't want a puppy. I want Sparky. I'll never find another dog like him. Now I'll never see him again. It was nearing midnight when Ben Hooper and Moose Farrell prepared to leave their cabin and head for town to rob the general store. You got the team hitched up, Moose? Yeah, they're all set. How about you? You get a gear together? It's all packed up, ready to load on the sled. How's that mutt we bought from old man Wiggins making out? Yeah, don't worry about him. I got him tied out back of the cab with a good stout rope. Mm-hmm. Too bad he's so ornery. You weren't lying this morning when you told Wiggins he'd make a good wheel dog. Well, we got no time to bring him in now. Uh, it's slow us up on the trail. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Okay, let's load this gear on the sled and get moving. A short time later, the two crooks arrived in town and halted their team in front of the general store. Main Street was dark and deserted, except for two lighted cafes located some distance away. All right. All right. Get out your man, Dan, and tie it over your face. All right. All set? All set. Now, let's hope he'll open up for us. Don't worry. The old buzzard will open up any time of the night if it means a chance to make a sale. Repeated knocking, they finally heard Omar Wiggins approaching from inside the store. All right, all right, I'm coming. You don't have to bust down the door. What in tarnation do you want out there? How about selling me some coal oil? Uh, well, that's a 
Well, now that you've roused me up. Man. Shut up and don't try slamming that door. I'll let you have it. Man, what do you want? Hand that lamp you're holding over to my party. Sure, sure. Here, take it, mister. Now get your hands up and start backing inside. Set the lamp down on the counter, then go get the kid, Moose. He's probably sleeping in the back room. Yeah. Well, I... what are you going to do to us? Make you open up that safe. No, no, I won't do it. I don't keep money in there anyway. You'll open it all right. You better make it snappy before I start squeezing this trigger. Meanwhile, Sparky had been chewing frantically at the rope that held him ever since the two crooks had left the cabin. The rope was thick. Sparky's powerful fangs were more than equal to the job of gnawing through him. Finally, all but a few strands had been severed. Sparky stopped gnawing and strained against the rope by lunging repeatedly. Suddenly, the last strands parted. And with a joyous bark, the big dog raced off through the night to return to his beloved young master. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Golly, look at that picture wind up. I hope he doesn't strike our man out. It's a home run. We win. Say, kid, wouldn't you like to go to a real major or minor league game with your dad or mom? Well, come out to the ballpark now as guest of a major or minor league team. Admission is absolutely free if you're 12 years or younger and bring a paying adult. And your free baseball ticket is as close as your grocery store. It's right inside packages of Quaker Pop wheat, Quaker Pop rice, Muffet shredded wheat, and two tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. The tickets tell the name of the teams and dates of the game. So rush over to your store. Get a free baseball ticket package of Quaker Pop Wheat or rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Pack Ten. Now, if these special packages are not yet in your store, just do this. Send a box top from the regular packages of these Quaker cereals to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Go now, free! <laughs> to continue. 20 minutes later, after cleaning out the safe, the two crooks had just finished tying and gagging Omar and Terry. Uh, I guess that'll hold them. All right. Put out the lamp. Let's clear out of here. All right. All right. Let's go. But as they opened the door, a snarling mass of fury sprang at them. Hey! It's the kid's dog! He was cut loose, huh? That means the feet think he's got an Well, you should get on him. Get him! Why, that was a close call. Well, never mind standing here talking about illicit movement, huh? It's me. All right, line him up, Carlo. How much? First you have. For several minutes, Sparky lay stunned by the brutal blows of the crook's heavy six-shooter. And then gradually, he began to regain consciousness. The room was pitch dark, but his nostrils caught the scent of his young master. Getting up off the floor, he trotted over to the spot where Terry was lying bound and gagged. With his damp, sensitive muzzle, he nosed over the boy's prostrate form. Terry couldn't talk and tell the dog what to do, so instead he rolled over and held out his wrist, which had been tied in back of him. For a few moments, Sparky was puzzled. And then finally he realized what his master expected of him. With an eager growl, he began gnawing at the ropes around Terry's wrist. Sergeant Preston was spending the night at the cabin of Constable Dave Manley with the intention of starting back to Dawson the next morning. The two men were awakened by the noise of someone pounding at the door. Uh, uh, and Blazes is knocking at this time of night. Uh, I'll go see who it is, Dave. Okay. Now light the lamp. All right. Sergeant Preston. Terry and Sparky, come on in. <laughs> What's wrong, son? My uncle's store was just robbed. Two men did it. The men who bought Sparky. They tied us up and got away with all the gold and money in my uncle's safe. When did it happen? It was less than an hour ago. How'd you get loose, son? My dog came back just when they were making their getaway. One of the men knocked him out with a gun. But after he came to, he gnawed through the ropes on my wrist. What about your uncle? They had him knotted up so tight I couldn't untie the rope. So he told me to run and get you without wasting any more time. Come on, Dave. Get dressed and get over there as soon as possible. All right, sir. When the two Mounties arrived at the store, they found Omar Wiggins highly wrought up and nearly incoherent as he bewailed the loss of his money. 
After freeing him and calming him down, they questioned him for further details. If the robbers were wearing bandanas over their faces, what makes you so sure they were the men who bought Sparky? Well, I tell you, I recognize their voices. It's not only that. When Sparky jumped at them, one of them shouted, it's the kid's dog. The other said he must have gotten loose. But you don't know what their names are or where they are. No, 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 I've already told you that. I've seen them around town lots of times, but I never did know who they were. Yeah, I suppose they've cleared out by now anyway. Knowing the dog gave away their identities. When they bought Sparky this morning, they said they were planning to leave town. Wait a minute. What's this piece of material lying on the floor? Sparky ripped that out of one of the robber's parkas. He had him by the arm. Oh, good work, Sparky. This may be the means of catching those two men. Hey, well, what do you mean, Sergeant? Yeah, I think this will give King the scent. Here, boy. Sniff this. You mean King will be able to trail them from that? I hope so. By thunder, I sure hope so, too. How about it, King? <laughs> yes, he has the scent, all right. Come on, Dave. Let's see which way they're headed. Right, Sergeant. They must have headed north. Yes, yeah, probably trying to make it to the border. All right, Dave. We'll hitch our teams and start after them. Right, Sergeant. The two crooks traveled hard throughout the night, but as dawn began to pale the sky, they decided it would be safe to halt for several hours' rest. The spot they chose for making camp was located at the crest of a sharp rise, which commanded a good view of the trail they had just covered. They had just unhitched the team and finished spreading out their bedrolls when they heard the sound of approaching dog team. Hey, Moose. Someone's coming. I got ears to see what you are. Let's take a look, see if we can make them out. There's two of them. Who's there after us? How many places would I know? For several moments, the two men stared intently, trying to make out the nature of the two approaching travelers through the dim morning light. Suddenly, Ben exclaimed in alarm. I thunder their mountain. Holy mackerel. They must be coming after us. Start hitching up the team. I'll drop down behind this boulder and hold them off with my rifle till you're ready to go. Right. A few minutes later, as the Mounties came within range, they were greeted by a shot from the top of the rise. Swinging their teams to opposite sides of the trail, the two Mounties quickly took cover behind trees and began to return the fire. We'll never take them this way, Dave. What else can we do? We go charging up the trail, that fellow with a rifle will drop us for sure. You stay here and keep him occupied. What about you? I'm going to try to work my way up the slope among the trees and close in on them. Come on, King. Oh. Darting swiftly from point to point among the shadowy trees and underbrush, the sergeant quickly worked his way to the top of the rise. But as he closed in on the crooks, he realized that he would have to move more cautiously. Moose had just finished harnessing the teeth when he heard the rustle of underbrush and caught sight of Sergeant Preston about 20 yards away. And there he is, shot. Get him. The sergeant had fired first, and Moose dropped to the ground, then swung around in panic. The boulder couldn't protect him now that he had been outflanked. He darted for the nearest tree. But his attention was focused in the direction of the sergeant, and he didn't realize that King was coming toward him through the underbrush from a different direction. When he did realize this danger, it was too late. The great dog charged. In a yell of fight, he went down under King's attack, dropping his rifle as he did so. Don't get this dog away from me! Call him out! Put him down, boy, like no. A moment later, the sergeant had picked up Moose's revolver and then came over to get Ben's rifle. All right, King, I have him. Dog here is going to kill me. If King had wanted to kill you, you'd be a dead man by now. I still don't trust him. Stop your whining and get up on your feet. You and your partner are under arrest in the name of the Crown. After handcuffing Ben Hooper and attending to Moose Farrell's wound, the two Mounties started back to Caribou Bend with their prisoners. Early that afternoon, the sergeant walked into Omar Wiggins' general store. Sergeant Preston, he's come back. By thunder, so he has. Did you catch those crooks, Sergeant? Did you get my money back? Yes, Omar. The crooks are in custody, and your money and your gold are right here. Well, well. Better count it. Make sure it's all there. I sure do thank you, Sergeant. If those crooks had gotten away, I'd have been ruined. No need to thank me, Omar, but I'd say that Sparky deserves a great deal of gratitude. <laughs> he set Tommy free and enabled him to notify us of the robbery. He ripped the piece off one crook's parka, and that gave King the scent. Without that, we never would have been able to track them down. I realize all that, Sergeant. Hey, I was a uh, fool to ever sell Sparky in the first place. If I hadn't have done that, those crooks probably never would have tried to rob me. You're right about that, Omar. They said so themselves. Then, then may I keep Sparky, Uncle Omar? <laughs> You're darn tootin' we'll keep him. 
Why, Dad read it telling you and Sparky rescued me from those crooks and saved my whole fortune. From now on, you're going to be my right-hand man. And if you need Sparky as a helper, you'll have him. Oh, boy, did you hear that, Sparky? You're going to stay with him for key. Well, King, old boy, now that Terry has Sparky back, I'd say this case is closed. We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. The Adventures of Rin Tin Tin, presented on Mutual every Sunday over most of these stations, is a listening treat especially designed for the whole family. Several generations have thrilled to the heroic exploits of Rin Tin Tin, the dog that's almost human. And now you can hear his further adventures every Sunday. The new series of Rinty's Adventures are laid in the colorful and legend-filled era of the Pioneer West. His young master is Corporal Rusty, stationed at Fort Apache. During the troublesome post-Civil War era, the Army Cavalry finds plenty of action in keeping under control the renegade Indians who set fire to the early settlers' cabins. And as members of the Fort Apache Cavalry Unit, Corporal Rusty and Rin Tin Tin are engaged in many stirring escapades. Make sure your family enjoys the pleasurable listening on The Adventures of Rin Tin Tin, presented by Mutual every Sunday over most of these stations. Now, here's Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston reporting, sir. Sergeant, Bald Rock is out of your territory. But I wish you'd go there and investigate a mystery. Glad to, Inspector. Several people have come into Dawson from Bald Rock to sell their most treasured possessions. There must be some reason why they're so desperately in need of money. I want to know that reason. I'll start immediately, sir. Come along, gang. Oh, oh. Only some impelling force could make the people of Bald Rock sell their treasured heirlooms. Sergeant Preston may have to meet and fight that force. It could well be a battle to the death. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America.